Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. I'm Marilyn Shriver. I'm the Director of Development at King State College. I'm delighted to welcome you all. Uh, we're going to uh, start this evening's program with remarks from the co-chairs of the Keene State College Little Sisters Fund Scholarship Committee, uh, beginning with Jenna Carroll. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Namaste. Miro Nam Jenna Ho. Tiharko Suba Kamana. Pani Gaiko Du. Arubokara. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jenna. Happy Tihar Diwali. Water, milk, plumbed. That is the extent of my Nepali. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here as the co-chair um, of this committee and I represent a local community organization, the Historical Society of Cheshire County. That's truly benefited from this program. The work that former little sisters, Pooja Tapa and Benajil Rai did to effectively document, preserve, and share our region's history and our culture is amazing. Helping us to pivot our efforts during COVID so we could continue to serve the community. So I am very, very happy to be here. And let me add too that I'm also a wife and mom of Nepalese husband and daughters who have found family with your little sisters. As a community member working across the street from Keene State, I'm really often surprised by the number of amazing, important programs occurring on campus. And I'm very proud to know and now participate in one of them, first as a donor and now working with the committee. Your contributions certainly make a meaningful difference in the lives of these young women. Pooja and Benajil are wonderful success stories, thanks to this partnership. Slesha and Nirmala are just killing it, as you'll soon discover. So I thought it would be helpful to quickly share some backstory. What is the Little Sisters Fund and how did it get started? The Little Sisters Fund helps economically disadvantaged Nepalese girls to become empowered leaders through education, mentoring, and community support. It contributes to the development of a more equitable, just, and prosperous world where all children can claim their right to education and where marginalization does not occur on the basis of gender. Helping to support education, but also taking a holistic approach. What are those barriers then to education? A lot of their work focuses on developing critical thinking skills in students, graduates mentoring uh, current students, mobile libraries, counseling, healthcare, et cetera. The Little Sisters Fund was founded in 1998 by Usha Acharya and Trevor Patzer. And I wanna share a tiny bit of their story. When Trevor was a teenager, a family friend offered to financially support his St. Paul boarding school education. From that day on, he had in the back of his mind that one day he would support someone else's education to pay things forward. Usha, for her part, had a similar experience. Eventually, she finished her first class in university and became the first woman from her village to earn a master's degree. She returned to Nepal in 1996 and became involved with organizations working on issues of girls trafficking and child labor in Nepal, quickly establishing herself as a leader and expert on the topic, publishing books and articles. In 1998, a mutual friend connected Usha and Trevor in Nepal and while together they discussed the many risks and challenges facing girls and the importance of education. At that time, nearly 55% of girls did not attend primary school. Given this fact, they decided to formalize and expand their efforts to match the magnitude of challenges in Nepal. The organization grew slowly and today, many of the little sisters have earned their education and in return have paid it forward funding the education of another girl through the Little Sisters Fund. The Little Sisters Fund has now grown to support the education of over 3,000 girls in 21 districts of Nepal through 10 complementary programs that tackle multiple dimensions of injustice. Trevor and Usha remain intricately involved in the day-to-day -day work of the organization. Trevor managing operations in the United States and Usha leading a team in Nepal. Today, Approximately 98% of little sisters complete their primary and secondary education through this program. Remarkable, given the fact that nationwide, only about 20% of girls complete high school. Last year alone, 
99% of high school graduates went on to pursue college. 10 little sisters pursuing engineering, 54 in healthcare, and 323 teacher trained. While the organization receives foundation support grants, 36% of its funding comes from individual donations like yours. At this point, I'd like to invite my co-chair, Brenda Chari, to the podium to talk about the partnership with Teen State. Well, good evening and uh, welcome to everyone here. I'm uh, Brenda Chari, faculty in the English department, and as Jenna said, co-chair of the Little Sisters Fund Keen State College uh, Partnership. And uh, it's uh, this wonderful program that brings LSS students here to Keen State. Jenna has told you a little bit about the fantastic work done by the organization in Nepal under the leadership of uh, um, Ms. Usha Acharya and Mr. Padsa, Trevor Padsa. I want to add that the program has found some very valuable partners here at uh, Keen State. First of all, I want to acknowledge and pay tribute to Len Fleischer and Erica Radish, who have uh, who are really the, the force, the energy behind the program. They have brought to it unending passion and energy, and they have unshakable faith in its uh, value. And it's Len and Erica who got the program, at least this version of the program, going about four or five years ago. And in 2017, I believe, they got uh, our first two students, Pooja Tapa and Benajil Ra. They were instrumental in bringing them over, and also Slesha Tuladar and... Uh, and Nirmala Tamang, and uh, Jenna and I continue to rely on them heavily for their support and their the good advice all the time. We email, we, we're emailing them all the time. Len, Len is here and he may be slightly embarrassed about this, but I think this is our moment to publicly acknowledge uh, Len Becker. Mm -hmm. And we are also very thankful to President Treadwell, President uh, Melinda Treadwell. She has extended unwavering support to the program. And uh, she is fully aware of the, what we can offer our students and what they offer us as well. And uh, Akeen State College, as many of you know, has been through some turbulent times in the last one year, but Dr. Treadwell's support has been uh, rock solid. As far as this program is concerned, she has uh, ensured that we are able to provide the, our students, our young scholars, a tuition board and uh, lodge and um, yeah and uh, I'd also like to thank Marilyn, Marilyn Schreiber. Marilyn is our uh, fundraiser in chief but um, and she's put together today's event so thank you Marilyn but she also goes far beyond the call of duty and does a great deal to help with the day-to-day -day running of the program and um, and of course Kai Stevenson who is the I want to get the title right, Director of International Students and the Global Exchange Office. And she too contributes a lot to enhancing our uh, students' experience at Keen State College. And of course, the board, the Keen State College LSF Partnership Board, uh, Margaret Walsh, Len Fleischer, of course, Suzanne Whittemore, Dottie Morris, Kai Stevenson, Erica Radish, Sylvia Macbeth, Judy Perry, Megan Burke Kidder, Claudia Burdett Lerner. Jennifer Carroll, Marilyn Shriver, and Dr. Treadwell. And, the, and of course, I want to thank all of you. Without your support, without your contributions, we could not keep this program going. It's as simple as that. So thank you. Uh, this program brings outstanding women from the other side of the world. I mean, quite literally the other side of the world to Keene State College. Yesterday, Marilyn and I were booking a ticket for Slesha to go back home after two and a half long years. And it takes about 28 hours to get to Nepal. So it is the other side of the world, really. So it brings these young students from the other side of the world. They benefit from the excellent education, the co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities offered by the college, as well as other opportunities for uh, social and civic engagement. Indeed, the Keen State experience opens up entire worlds to them. And I, as an international person myself, can testify to the fact there's nothing as uh, world revealing as uh, getting an education outside your home country. And uh, I think it helps you discover other worlds. It also helps you discover ourselves. That's what I found. And I hope that is what the young people here are finding. And um, we found with our first two students, Pooja and Benajil, that they came in as girls and they left us as confident, thoughtful young women. 
eager uh, to take on the world. And I'm sure this will be the case with Slesha and Nirmala as well. But it is not a one-way flow. I also want to recognize that these young women bring a lot to us. Our interaction with them helps us broaden our cultural horizons. It makes us welcome the world into our homes and classrooms. And I think very importantly, it requires that we set aside our preconceptions and our stereotyping of women from the so-called developing world or the third world. I think, it's, uh, I think they, may, they, they make us do that, realize that we cannot stereotype women from the so-called third world. And in fact, they teach us nearly as much as they learn from us. They're also active, engaged members of the campus and the local community and uh, good citizens in every possible way who enrich both the college and the local community in many ways. So finally, I'd like to thank Slesha and Nirmala as well. And I guess this is a good point at which to invite Dr. Fredbell to deliver. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Keith State. It's wonderful to be here in person this year. Uh, celebrating Nirmala Salesha. Thank you for the work that you are doing already in just a few short weeks here, Balesa King. And Salesha, thank you for the work that you are doing in your program and as part of this community. Pooja and Benajil uh, were two students I met in my first few months when I returned as interim president at Keene State. And I, of course, have known Len and Erica for years and I have such love and respect for Len and the work that he has done as a faculty member and a leader here at Keene State. But it was learning about the Little Sisters Fellowship, the Little Sisters Program, the opportunity for Keene State to be the first public institution in our country to commit to offering an opportunity for Little Sisters um, candidates to come and to study in our country and to, as Dr. Cherry said, bring to us the gifts that you have to offer to help us become better. Um, and as I met Pooja and Benajil, and as I watched them grow, and I watched them everywhere that I was, they were there. <laughs> it is astounding. As a president, I do a lot of different events, but everywhere I went, Pooja and Benajil were part of a club, or the Equinox, or doing video recordings, or working with their faculty mentors to expand the awareness of their view of the world, but also our view into the world through their eyes. They are profound young women who I miss deeply. But what I wish to say to Slesha and Nirmala is that I see in you the same beauty and grace and the same engagement with the world. And I know that you will help us, which is why as a college, this is such an important partnership. We have lots of opportunities to direct our resources and to speak about what we value, but the ability to partner with an organization like the Little Sisters Program, to work as a community, to create opportunity, but also grow and learn with you is profound. And I really thank you for what you bring to us and what I hope you will take from us as you step out into the world. And to the committee, to our supporters, thank you for supporting these young women, for helping us to wrap around the tuition and the fees that the college offers as are part of this commitment Thank you for helping these young women have the experiences that they do, the homestays, the opportunities to travel with you, the opportunities to grow and be a part of your families. I know, Len, how often you opened your home and how many times you created welcoming events. And I know that you're joined by so many of the committee members and the leadership in this room to create that kind of safe and welcoming space. So thank you all for helping us continue this partnership and I can't wait to hear about all that you are doing uh, and continuing to do at Keene State. So my thanks to everyone. I'm going to look at my notes because I think it's Marilyn next, but let me make sure. Nirmala is next. So Nirmala, thank you. And you may take the podium. I'm going to move to the front row. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Nanda. Good evening and namaste, everyone. Honorable President Mavinda, dear LSF committee, and all the supportive ladies and gentlemen present over here. I feel very happy to see each and every one of you over here. And I wanna thank you for your precious time and such a warm welcome. My heart is full of gratitude. So as I welcome all of you here today, I wanna to start with my, introducing myself. So, my name is Nirmala Tamang, and I was born on 11, 
14th of November 2001 in Kathmandu, which is the capital city of Nepal. I have a beautiful family of six, that, which consists of my dad, mom, two of my elder sisters, my younger brother, and me. And a fun fact about me is that I love playing ping pong as I started playing ping pong when I was 10 years old. So as I said that, I was born as the third daughter to my parents. And having the third daughter must have been a disappointment to my parents who live in a so-called male-dominated society, but my parents never took it that way. So what, what, my parents never took it that way. Life went on and I got enrolled in school. My parents made sure that all of the, us three sisters started <coughs> reading in a private school. And my dad was in army and my mom used to wear pasmina sauls, which is like a handicraft. And with their little income, it was not sufficient enough to have a very comfortable life in the capitalist Kathmandu. But however, 2008 is the year which took a turn in my life. And it was the year I got accepted for the scholarship from Little Sisters Fund. Being sponsored by Little Sisters Fund was like a blessing to me. Like I was economically supported. I got stationery supplies. It is obviously the pillar of my mental support and it provides me the counseling and awareness raising programs and various preventive health issues and whatnot. So I'm very much like indebted to Little Sisters Fund. And I feel like rather than an organization, Little Sisters Fund is an emotion of feeling and a support system that I have been very blessed to have in my life. So where do I come from? So although I was born and raised in Kathmandu, I am originally from Sindhu Palchuk, which is uh, a district to the northern part of Nepal. So my village, Sindhu Palchuk, is a very beautiful place which has so much potentiality for tourism and has so many skilled women who have so many talents, but yet they are only limited to the household chores and uh, animal rearing, which really triggered the mini me to do something, to do something for my hometown. So that is where my dream of entrepreneurship started as I wanted to do something for my hometown as I wanted to empower women. And that's when I started my dream of being an entrepreneur. That's why I aspire to be a business entrepreneur. That's why I'm majoring in business management in specialization of entrepreneurship in Kent State. I really aspire to be a person one day so that I can like influence on lives of people like you all have influenced on mine. So I really hope to be a people, a person like you all. So, <clears throat> In Little Sisters Fund, Little Sisters Fund normally provides education up to 12th grade. So I also graduated as a Little Sister from this organization in 2019. But Kin State really connected me to Little Sisters Fund very soon again as this became my next journey. I feel like it has already been three months, but I feel like King State has been like a home to me nowadays. So I got accepted by King State in February 2021. Now, right now, I have started uh, working as an Equinox supporter, which feels like I have found myself diving into all the new stories and like inspiring people from professors to friends and to all the new people I'm meeting in the journey to Kent State. They inspire me in like various different ways and like I'm very happy to have that. Similarly, I have started working at Mass and Library in the circulation desk and I feel like that is such a positive space where my supervisors and all of the staff there are like teaching me new, teaching every new thing every day. Similarly, sharing culture in the table has been the favorite part of my journey. In all the clubs I have been engaged, 
the Global Cultural Club, the Women of Circle, and all the Office of Multicultural Diversity, Global Education Office. I'm so thankful for all of this. I feel so grateful to have my undergraduate degree in such a college, which has like so many resources, and I feel very indebted. That's why I want to be involved in Keen State community as much as I can and contribute to this community. So with a heart full of gratitude, I want to thank President Belinda Treadwell and former Keen State Professor of Education, Lynn Fleser and Eric Aratis for connecting Nepal to Keen State. I want to thank Holy Two Sisters family back in Nepal and the United States and all the people over here who are here to support us. I want to thank our supportive host families and all the supportive people I have been meeting, Brinda Chari, Brinda and Uncle, Mishra family, and all the other people because they are making me feel home right here. That's why I want to thank all the King State family and obviously, I am also very grateful to <clears throat> our fellow sister, Flesa, Benazil, and Puza, who have left such a, who have been leaving and have left such an amazing legacy in Kin State. And thank you so much. So, all that I am and hope to be, I want to owe you, owe my parents, Kin State, Little Sisters Man, and all of you that are here to support us. And I want to end my note saying that it is said that faith can move the mountain. And I think that all of you have been that faith to the mountain of my dreams. And I want to make sure to make it to the top. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. With that note, I want to invite Slesa Duladar to the stage. Thank you so much, Nirmala. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here despite this cold weather. Um, I am Slesha Tulader. I'm a junior double majoring in architecture and sustainable product design and innovation. I'm from Kathmandu, Nepal, and I am thrilled to be sharing two years of my life at King State College with you all tonight. I always wonder where time flies. Mid-November 2019, I was presenting about myself in front of unfamiliar faces then and now a family. So many things have changed since then, way too many, except for one thing. I still can't get up for my ADMs. <laughs> Jokes aside, two years in here has not only prepared me professionally, but has impacted me at personal levels. Starting off with my beautiful two majors, architecture and speedy, I always had huge, huge passion for creating. Coming to King State has introduced me to classes and design studios I never imagined I would take. Even though I am at TDS building till 2 a.m. almost every exam week, it has broadened my perspective towards the field of creation, has challenged me to my creative limits, and moreover, shown me the impact that I can make in people's lives through creating. Who would have known? or thought that I would be working uh, for one of the coolest labs of Dr. Habib and be successful publishing four scientific journals and national conferences in span of just one year. I totally love my work. It has made me a critical thinker, a better presenter in front of scientific audience and brought a great satisfaction in working for science. Being involved in clubs helped me make friends. I will always remember and um, gave me a boost in confidence that this messy and a little clumsy person can be responsible to sometimes. Being in Global Culture Club has helped me make friends from all around the world with different backgrounds and culture. It's lovely. Speaking of culture, from the first day, Keen State has accepted me for who I am. It has given me a space to share my culture with others while giving us this opportunity to experience cultures from all around the world. If there is anything this place has done, it has made me more Nepali than I've ever been before. <laughs> Traveling to different places ha have been such an adventure and a huge perspective shift for me. Going to Tennessee to serve Snowbird Cherokee community was a life-changing experience for me. 
it made me realize if there is one thing that we all share in common, it's being human, the best human we can possibly be. Keen State would be incomplete and unimaginable if I did not have my friends with me. Friends from across the world, friends with different cultures, friends with similar and different or opposite values, they have taught me to learn, unlearn, and accept. The sisterhood for sure. Oops. The sisterhood for sure. It has been a thrilling experience seeing their growth in us and knowing that I would always have their back and they would always have mine. But college is, college is also hard sometimes. I wouldn't say it was all colorful and, um, you know, always happy phases of being homesick. My design model just broke days and something sometimes, you know, just emotionally drained. But I always had support from the community that I would never find in any part of the world. I witnessed the power of community in here the first time I was in quarantine. I was in quarantine in 2019, it was horrible, but I received 62, let me repeat, 62 postcards and email just wishing me good health. So today I want to, I want to take time to thank Len and Erica, Brenda and Uncle, Judah and Jenna, Tashi and Jampa for being best hosts ever. I want to thank Melinda and everyone, each one of you over here for making this happen. Thank you, thank you so much. Len, do you remember this picture? <laughs> so it was the day Pooja Benajil and I landed in the United States and Len was giving us the tour of his house. And um, on the background is the flower that blooms once every year. And it did that night. It was very special. So in the middle of a chaotic life, I just knew that that day I belonged here and I have a purpose. Like these three strongest women in my life whose purpose was to change societal narratives towards women, especially, especially in countries like ours, so my purpose is to bring about impact in the world and pave roads for thousands of little sisters like me back home, smiling and dreaming big because sky is not the limit. We will paint our sky if we have and we want to. Thank you. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it the way it is because um, it's an adorable picture. Uh, before we uh, before we move on, does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask of uh, Slesha or Nirmala? Or she can ask afterward. I have a question for Nirmala, and I hope you'll you'll come back up to answer it so people can hear your answer. And I think it is. If can you tell us one thing that you thought oh, the United States is going to be like this, or my experience is going to be like this. And then you got here and you're like, it's not like this at all. <laughs> or was there anything exactly as you expected? So before I arrived to the United States, the United States in my head was like big buildings, city lights and the crowded streets. But when I arrived to Keen, it was totally different, which was similar to Nepal, my hometown, and all the green trees, the environment, the warm and the wind, and all the beautiful people who were like so caring and supporting, which did not like, I was obviously homesick, but I want to say that the people over here are like family to me nowadays that they don't make me miss home so much nowadays. And yeah, United States is like beautiful, beautiful like Nepal. <laughs> so 
Alicia, would you tell us about your cardboard chair? Well, we have the one you have you sitting in it. Yeah, I'm really my memory like is really bad. So so on the right, this picture is um, of a chair and it was quite a challenge. Um, it's for, it was for one of my classes that I'm taking this semester, it's called Product Design 2. And I absolutely love this, um, love this course. Um, so the challenge was uh, to make a chair out of cardboard, cardboard and you can't use any glue and it has to function um, during the class time when you're giving presentation, you had to sit on the chair and make sure that you don't fall and hurt yourself. So yeah, it was great. Love this, love this project. Um, we have a, what, Veronica? Oh, so how many iterations of the chair do you have? Ooh, I think Warren and <laughs> Curtis, because they, um, so they are our supervisor at the Metal Lab Speedy and Wood Lab uh, Speedy department. And they were very, very um, helpful. They have been very helpful throughout my entire journey in Speedy. Um, but I think I had, we did like small um, one fourth scale models. And I think I did three of them. Um, in the beginning, it just did not work. And um, eventually, I think that's just how design process goes. Like it, yeah, eventually it worked. The backrest still does not work a little bit. It's like <laughs> wobbly, but yeah, try, try my best. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. And one of the things I love about your presentation, Slaysha, is how many people in the photos are, are in the room tonight. And that speaks to the community that has grown up around this program. Um, the very first gift to the Keene State College Little Sisters Fund scholarship was received on April 7th, 2016. And the most recent gift was made yesterday. Um, and it's wonderful, but not surprising to see the sustained support for this program. And, and it's not surprising because I mean, just just look at the students that, uh, that we've had the, the privilege to interact with. Can we have another round of applause for Nirmala and Slesha. So I have my fundraising hat on and I wanted to take a moment to tell you about one particular gift that was received this year uh, because there's a poignancy to it that, uh, that I would like to share with you. Um, there's a young woman named Federica Gelmini, and she was from Italy, and her uncle was Amidio Marvelli, vice president of global distribution for what was then called Markham Corporation, it's now Markham Namage. And Federica is described as having an incredible desire to enrich her life through global experiences. She came to the United States in the winter of 1995 and began a marketing internship at Markham and she enrolled in marketing courses at Keene State College. Only seven weeks into Federica's visit to Keene, she suffered an accidental fall that took her life at the young age of 26. The Federica Gelmini International Education Scholarship Fund was created to honor her memory by promoting the spirit of international adventure, education, and global understanding by supporting other young people in their own quest for an international experience. Until this year, the scholarship has always been awarded through the local Rotary Club to area students planning to study abroad. But thanks to a member of the Keene State College Little Sisters Fund Scholarship Committee, Sylvia Macbeth, a trustee of the Gelmini Scholarship heard about the program and arranged for us to apply for support. And that re resulted in a very generous donation of $5,000. I would just like to say thank you, Sylvia, for making the connection and thank you to trustee Jenny Norman and all of the trustees of the Federica Gelmini International Education Scholarship Fund for your generous support. It's a wonderful tribute to Federica and to our fantastic students. So since the very first gift in 2016, 
214 alumni, friends, and local businesses and companies have donated over $95,000 in gifts ranging from $10 to $10,000 to the little to the Keene State College Little Sisters Fund Scholarship. So thank you very much. As the program has evolved, Keene State has been able to provide more institutional support for the students, but make more no mistake, your gifts still make a huge difference. The scholarship funds pay for books and other education materials, and they pay for co-curricular programs, most notably the travel portion of the August Morris Honors Program, in which our scholars uh, usually enroll. You can see uh, Slash's, uh, your uh, photos of your trip to Boston, the trip to DC, the trip to your, and the alternative spring break trip. Um, and the scholarship also pays for each student to travel back to Nepal once during their four years here. It all adds up and your generous support keeps the program going. So again, thank you. Our, the plan at the college is to welcome one new student every other year. So there is always a big sister, if you will, to uh, the little sister who enrolls. There, and there's also, that means that there's also continuing opportunity for you all to get involved um, in the lives of our students uh, as hosts. So you too can be in one of the scholars PowerPoint presentations at one of these events. So reach out to uh, Brenda or Jenna or me if you'd like more information about how you can be involved. Um, so thank you for coming this evening and please stay and enjoy refreshments and conversation with our scholars and have a great evening.